Hi, this is a talk about machine learning module for Apache Ignite. Anybody use Apache Ignite in your production or for your own pet project? Raise your hand. Me only? <laughs> okay, someone. <laughs> Let me introduce myself. I'm Alexey Zinoviev, Java Big Data Trainer. And previous day, some of you attended, um, it was yesterday, my training about Apache Spark. Uh, also, in the last two years, I spent a lot of my time to commit uh, something into Apache Ignite module, ML module especially. And uh, what is Apache Ignite? As I understand, uh, not so many people here know about that. Uh, let me briefly talk about uh, Apache Ignite. It will be official definition from official documentation. It's a memory-centric distributed database, caching and processing platform for transactional, analytical, and streaming workloads, and etc., etc. This is official definition, of course, and it works. But uh, for from my perspective as a developer, Apache Ignite, first of all, like a Swiss knife uh, to speed up your own backends. For example, if you have a Spark or if you have a I don't know, MySQL or something else, or you need an in-memory uh, file system like uh, e EGFS, it, uh, part, it is a part of uh, Apache Ignite. It can be used to speed up your backends, and as I say, I'm not an evangelist of whole Apache Ignite, only for ML model. And uh, let's talk briefly about ML frameworks and the situation on the market. I will not waste your time to talking about what is machine learning or not. If you don't know what is it, that's a problem for you today. <laughs> I suppose most of you have taken some machine learning course on Coursera or somewhere. Maybe you use machine learning algorithms in production. Am I correct? <laughs> I hope. And I hope that you used one of the next machine learning libraries, which will be listed on the next slide. For example, I don't know, maybe old Apache Mahout, maybe uh, a few releases of Spark ML Leap, Maybe TensorFlow, I don't know, uh, via PyTorch or Keras, or Scikit-Learn if you're a Python developer, maybe DL4J for neural networks if you're a Java developer. I don't know what, but I think if you are trying to add ML capabilities to a project, you will play with one of them. But could it be trained direct, directly on Ignite data? A lot of companies like uh, banks, like uh, e-commerce, used Ignite uh, as a backend. But all of them have, have a problem uh, to train their data uh, in, uh, outside of Ignite cache. Uh, the main problem is that models are trained and deployed in different systems. And this is cost. The data scientists have to wait for the ETL to move data uh, into system like PyTorch from the previous slide to Apache Spark uh, for training purpose. And then data scientists have to wait while this process completes uh, and redeploy the models in a production and etc. And the whole process can take hours can take hours moving from one system to another. Uh, I think most of you know this process it names. ETL, and I'm trying to go to the zero ETL with Apache Ignite ML model. The start of development of this model uh, two years ago was inspired of all this pain, of all this task, uh, and we are trying to reduce costs of ETL. Maybe uh, in the ideal, wo ideal world, we're trying to reduce to the zero. Um, a half of the year, uh, ML module brings massive scalability and it, it's changed status from the beta uh, project as a separate part of the Apache Ignite. Uh, it consists uh, of two parts like ML and DL, and I will talk later about DL especially, and it totally reduces a significant cost for ETL between different systems. I mean that the one of the system is Apache Ignite, of course. Uh, but in the previous uh, releases, we have implemented all algorithms via the common distributed algebra. And a lot of another ML frameworks you used the same way, like Apache Mahout, Apache Spark, and etc. But all of them did not take into account the peculiarities of algorithms. Uh, and in release, 2.7, it will be released in a few days, I think next, next week or uh, next month, I'm, I'm not sure about final dates. In this release, the majority of algorithms are implemented via special partition-based data set. Uh, this is special primitive for machine learning, uh, other Ignite data. There the, each partition has special internal structure for each kind of algorithm or preprocessor of data. 
Uh, Let's look into partition-based data set. Uh, if you're working with Spark, it reminds you Spark, but uh, only in IPI maybe. Internally, it's a very different case. Apache Ignite supports uh, partition-based data set, as I said. And this is like abstraction layer uh, that sits between machine learning algorithms and the storage, real Ignite storage, and different computations of the storage. And First of all, it uses a MapReduce-like approach for computation, but uh, without uh, checkpointing into HDFS or EGFS. Uh, it's only in memory calculations, and computations needed to be performed on a data set uh, uh, split on the map operations, which can be executed on the separate nodes, and the reduce operation, which reduces the result of map operations to one final result. I think all of you know MapReduce concept. Uh, every data set is spread across partitions. Here you can see on the figure, for example, uh, two Ignite nodes and two partitions uh, with different sub-partitions there. And partitions holds also a persistent training context and recoverable training data uh, stored locally on every node. Uh, the 2.7 release will be published in a few days, as I said, and you can find all these algorithms now. I don't know, go to the Apache Ignite, download master branch or release branch with a minor box and use it today, maybe in production. <laughs> uh, but uh, if you want to download stable version, you should go today to the 2.6. But I think you should wait one month and go with new version. Currently, the framework contains enough implementations of classical machine learning algorithms and data preprocessing methods to be comparable with Apache Spark. I prepared a uh, very long table uh, with comparison of Apache Spark and Apache Ignite. Uh, it could be shared later if you're interested. And uh, as we see, this is like a parity. In this library, you can find such well-known algorithms like logistic regression, SVM, KNN. ANN, it's like approximate KNN. And uh, decision trees, random forests, and et cetera. And most of them can be used for both for binary and for multi-classification tasks. And if you prefer to predict values, I don't know, instead of class labels, I'd like classification tasks, uh, then we have a lot of regression algorithms which can be related to the previous or has another implementation. And of course, we couldn't avoid a gentleman set the neural networks. The distributed multilayer multi perceptron has many hyperparameters, and internally, uh, this uh, algorithm is used in logistic regression implementation because it's very effective, effective uh, in uh, its internal structure. Uh, let's talk about preprocessing. Of, of course, uh, the sun will die <laughs> if we implement all preprocessing uh, algorithms which are known for data scientists, but we are trying. And we could help uh, data scientists who are coding in Python and using scikit-learn with uh, distributed data, with an enorm enormous data preprocessing on Ignite cluster before sampling to the Jupyter notebook. And uh, especially, uh, data scientists can use only this kind of features, for example, only preprocessing Processor, preprocessor to reduce the size of data, for example. Uh, of course, Ignite has a such popular preprocessing transformation like normalization of vectors or different kinds of data scaling. And here, a very big uh, size of different algorithms. So for example, every day somebody in community are trying to add something new here. They are not very difficult to implement, but uh, are very useful for different data scientists. Uh, currently, the Ignite supports uh, two famous scalers, MinMax scaler and MaxAB scaler, which helps uh, to play correctly with learning grade in machine learning algorithms, you know. And of course, um, the most of classical algorithms uh, don't support work with string values or categorical features or Yanam if you're a Java developer. And Ignite supports uh, a one hot encoding and string indexing with a few different strategies. You can uh, choose one of them. And if you don't know, I. Uh, I, I should uh, make a small comment here. One hot encoding is a representation of uh, categorical features as a binary vectors. Here you can see how uh, different you know, values can be presented as uh, vectors. 
uh, how to get the best model? This is a good question. Uh, with a good question, and sometimes it's difficult to evaluate uh, how good this or that uh, binary classification model. Currently, Ignite supports metric only for binary classification, but maybe in future we will we add more. And the first idea is splitting of initial data set on test and train subsets. And but sometimes we could get an effect of overfitting here. And the next idea is k-fold cross-validation. Uh, during this process, Ignite splits data sets into k consecutive folds, and each fold is then used once as a validation, uh, while the k minus, minus 1 uh, remaining folds form the training set. Uh, it's very easy uh, to make with Ignite. I will show it later in coding session. And machine learning ensemble model averaging, what is it? <laughs> People ask me. Ensemble methods, uh, this is a, like a meta algorithm that combines different machine learning models. For example, you are trained something on this piece of data with this kind of algorithm and uh, on another piece of data with another algorithm. And you are trying to combine uh, to make the best model here. And uh, this is a very common approach. For example, all Kaggle competition competitors uh, are trying to use kind of these ensemble methods. And currently, we're trying to decrease, for example, variance. It's a kind of begging. Bias, and these ensemble methods named as boosting, or improve predictions, staking. And currently, the Ignite supports only boosting, the begging uh, in the progress, as I know, and staking on the roadmap. I will talk about roadmap later. And we have yet one superpower features which, uh, I don't know, which makes Ignite, for example, better than Spark. Uh, also in Ignite ML community, we experiment not only with classical algorithms, uh, and we support online mini-batch learning. Uh, that uh, seems that um, we have one model which was trained on the first batch of data, and the next model uh, which was trained on the next batch of data. And we could merge them by a special law, and we could define a custom law to merge them into one uh, model, to combine them into one model. It gives uh, to users ability to make online learning pipeline. It's very important. Uh, now it's like an experimental uh, feature, but I think in future it can be used uh, like a production feature too. Also, also it's very fresh new. Uh, we have our integration with TensorFlow. This is a very hype topic, I think. Uh, all instruments trying to integrate with TensorFlow because it's the most popular framework for narrow network building and etc. And TensorFlow in Apache Ignite is a tool set for deep learning that allows to utilize all TensorFlow functionality and distributed nature of Apache Ignite. And currently, it consists of three components, Ignite data sets, um, it's like a projection uh, of data. Uh, we, could, we could send data to Apache Ignite. We could read data from Apache Ignite. A GFS plugin that allows to use uh, Apache Ignite distributed file system. It's like HDFS, but in memory. Uh, for checkpointing and communication with TensorBoard. Uh, if you know what is it, you will be happy with that. And uh, now, in progress, the distributed training. It helps uh, to make real distributed training, May take uh, the algorithms from TensorFlow, it do that around uh, Apache Ignite cluster. Uh, today, uh, you can download, for example, Anaconda and the import TensorFlow, uh, Contrib Ignite, and use Ignite data set, for example, if you are a Python developer. And today, our PR, I mean our, uh, the people who involved in ML uh, module, is merged to TensorFlow, and you can download that and use, as I said. But after that, you can ask me how to contribute. If you're interested in contributing into an open source project like that, you could ask me or contact me via email, and etc. And I will talk shortly about the situation in Apache Ignite community in ML module especially. Currently, we have more than uh, 180 contributors totally. I think it's around 200. And eight of them are involved in ML module development. Uh, also, you can find uh, Russian resource in VK uh, group. You can go to this link or blog posts in English or Ignite documentation, of course, and especially ML documentation. But uh, the best place to learn Apache Ignite is examples, because 
I think the best examples in whole Apache Ignite in, in many Apache uh, projects uh, which you could find. Uh, today I will run a few demo which was uh, developed by me by myself a few weeks ago and committed to the Apache Ignite uh, examples and uh, you can download that and run it by yourself. Uh, also I want to present the very fresh thing. Uh, this is a roadmap for Ignite uh, uh, Free, only for ML model, of course. We are going to support NLP, uh, simple M NLP uh, algorithms like TF-EDF model, what to work. Uh, we want to do more integration with TensorFlow and more clustering algorithms. Currently, we have only k-means. And uh, also, uh, a few people assign tickets about naive bias and statistical package. And also, this is a very tasty thing, uh, algorithms of dimensional reduction. How to help uh, data scientists to reduce the number of features with different methods. Also, we have starter tasks for newbies. If you are a Java developer, for example, not very big fan of Spring and Lombok and etc., have a strong knowledge of stats, math, ML algorithms, you're welcome. Uh, the time between uh, the event then PR is uh, added uh, as a pull request to the Apache Ignite uh, GitHub. Uh, and, the ta and the event then it will be merged is very short. It's like one or two week. It's very short in comparison with different Apache uh, projects. Uh, follow me on these resources, but we need uh, to do something with demo. I uh, will run a few examples and another examples you can run without me by yourself. Okay, mm, just a second. Okay, uh, let's begin. First of all, we have a Titanic data set there. Uh, we can find a data about Titanic passengers, about the age, about the, uh, I don't know, uh, class, about the, uh, and, uh, and other different features like amount of uh, parents here and etc. And first of all, we will use decision tree classification trainer uh, for the training algorithms to get decision tree uh, node model. Uh, we, ha we, we could print uh, this model uh, with uh, special beautifier and uh, the first step, this is a feature extraction. Uh, we have a data set like uh, amount of doubles and we need to extract data. There is no uh, special algorithms to do something with metadata. We work with that like with uh, Java arrays. Uh, also, we could specify our label extractor. For example, labels are stored in the uh, first column. And after that, we put our feature extractor and label extractor into trainer to feed uh, on the data and get the model. And after that, we will calculate the accuracy, the main metric for the binary classification. Here we have binary classification task. Who will survive or who will not? Uh, okay, let's run that and I will comment it also. In the next steps, we will uh, take this code and change something uh, for example, we will add a pre-processing stage. Currently, we use only three features from the data sets, but uh, there are uh, around uh, 14 or 15 features. And uh, we will try to improve the accuracy of our algorithm. Here, here you can find that a uh, trained model looks like there are a lot of ifs and else's, which could be very easy to put uh, into the Java code uh, or in Scala code. And also you can see very high accuracy and uh, not so large test error. But let's do something else. Um, on the next step, on the next step, uh, we will uh, trying to impute something. Imputing this is a uh, algorithm which helps to miss, uh, uh, to to fill missed values. For example, we should define here uh, the first preprocessing stage, uh, imputing preprocessor, which will be uh, put it like a parameter uh, into trainer. You could, uh, you, you could see here, imputing preprocessor. And uh, in this imputer, 
we have no special or separate settings. Uh, it will take uh, columns or features and trying to fill, for example, with average on this column. Okay, uh, we'll not run these examples. It compiles uh, sometimes long and running on the Ignite cluster on the local machine. And uh, let's go to the next uh, step. The step, uh, for example, three. We will work with categorical features. For example, we have a lot of categorical features there. Uh, uh, for example, it's sex, embarked. Uh, and uh, we use one hard encoder to binarize that. And all binarized columns will be added to the end of data sets to train that. Let's um, see how the accuracy increased after running of that. And uh, you could see how we add new steps to the chain. Currently, we have two preprocessing stages, imputing and uh, uh, one hard encoder for categorical features and the training to get the final model. For example, you can see that accuracy is higher than in the previous example. Uh, let's go to the step four. We easily could add new features. For example, if uh, they are double features, it's age and fair. We could add it feature extractor and rerun the algorithms. Let's see how the accuracy is increased. Maybe not so many. We could experiment. We could exclude a few of feature, a few set of features, and uh, add new features too. Um, this is a simple uh, work of data scientist. Um, just to wait, you can see how the Ignite cluster is running up. And uh, here uh, you can see uh, that accuracy is higher, but the um, adding of new features uh, don't uh, make something really new, don't, don't make real gap between previous accuracy. Uh, okay. okay, let's go to the next step. Uh, for example, let's miss something. For example, you want to switch uh, on the another algorithm. It's very uh, popular algorithm, KNN. For example, it's not implemented in Spark, but c could be uh, easily implemented via your hands. Uh, or mm, you could improve the uh, performance of this algorithm by different uh, KD trees and different indexing. Or, for example, we improved the performance with approximate version of KNN. But here, yeah, I will use only simple KNN. Uh, and also, I add in the previous uh, steps minmax scalar preprocessor and normalization preprocessor 2 with uh, LP matrix 1. And also, let's run the KNN classification trainer. And we will uh, run it with k uh, is equal 1. Uh, that means that we will take only the first neighbor, who is the uh, most closest, uh, closest uh, neighbor for us, and uh, will classify uh, us as this neighbor. Mm, let's run, and we'll see very crazy accuracy. It's like. I don't know, only 5 percentage test error. Uh, what's happened here? The, 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 the main, the main uh, challenge here that we didn't split on train and test data set before that. But of course, uh, you can do it. Uh, you can do it easily. Mm, just a second. Mm. Mm, I'm sorry. Any other example? Split train test. Uh, in Apache Ignite, we use a filter concept, and uh, we uh, don't work with real uh, uh, data set. We work with evalu uh, lazy evaluations, and we should define um, uh, functions of filtering, of splitting, and etc. to bind them uh, into the one chain. And also, to split uh, into train it and test uh, subsets, we use train test splitter uh, this per uh, this that percentage. And uh, currently, we will train on the train set and uh, we'll uh, calculate accuracy on the test set. It will be correct. Let's rerun with decision trees. Or you could rerun that with KNN. And of course, accuracy will be lower. 
Also, I will talk about next steps, uh, then it, uh, then the drying. And uh, also, we could use, uh, as I said, uh, cross-validation. We could split it on the different uh, folds, for example, on three folds. But, but you, can, you can see here very high accuracy. I think that 80% uh, uh, is, is too high for this uh, kind of algorithm. And uh, OK, uh, I see that we have not many time. I will finish with uh, the last example. Uh, For example, it's very easy uh, to start uh, with the new a special uh, API, the API of pipeline. It's uh, in the progress now, and uh, it supports the uh, automatic tuning of hyperparameters via parameter grid. There you could add a few parameters of trainer or of preprocessor, uh, and the pipeline model in cross-validation will work with different uh, combination of these parameters and will find the best model, the best set of hyperparameters. Here you can see the prototype of pipeline API, I think that in the future release it will be uh, it will has uh, the final version. And uh, here you could add easily feature extractor, label extractor, add preprocessors with different settings, uh, preprocessor, 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 and as a final stage you could add trainer and call the feed function and get the model. And this model. Uh, on this model or on this pipeline, you could calculate accuracy too. Uh, not only accuracy supports in Apache Ignite, but I'd like this metric for this kind of classification task. Uh, also, you could implement a custom, um, custom metric, for example, if you implement uh, this interface. Uh, currently, we have no rock AUK curve, but I think that somebody will assign this ticket and add this metric to Apache Ignite, for example. Okay, that's all. Thank you for your attention, and let's join the Apache Ignite community. Thank you, Alexei, very much. We have a sudden question from Slider. Uh, I will voice it out. Please compare Ignite to Spark. Oh, uh, okay. Just a second. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. I I don't have internet here, but uh, I, I could compare it easily. Uh, Apache Spark is designed especially for uh, big data cases mostly and for uh, wide range scanning uh, range sca I'm sorry scanning of data for example from one key to another key consequently uh, but for example Apache Ignite is developed as a Java cache firstly like memcache uh, like something else like Redis first of all in and it's better for Atomic updates, for example, is better for transactional uh, data and, and etc. If you know that the Spark uh, in reality doesn't support real transactions, AC transaction, etc. But Ignite supports, and in machine learning, then you have deal not with very large data set. You could preprocess that and reduce to. I, I don't know, like medium data, right? Uh, you could train on that and. For example, Ignite model, as I said, is uh, comparable by features. Uh, but I couldn't compare whole Ignite and whole Spark. Uh, as I know, the Ignite has a lot of connectors to different sources, etc., and uh, uh, the amount of, those, of these connectors is higher than in Spark, for example. Uh, okay. You have any questions? Okay, another questions. Or you can ask me in Russian or English later, or on break, or on lunch. Okay, thank you, Alexei, please.